quite frankly, if you give us 50 cents, we'll give you a dollar in terms of our performance. That's that's generally what the economic impact is to packaging with Boveda versus not using us. For, for sure. And, and when we were down seeing you guys uh, and having access to your resources and some of your presentations and having given your presentation to several groups, understanding that calculation from a yield perspective to dollars is important. And the other thing that we did down there is we listened. So, uh, you know, we have a water activity meter uh, ourselves and part of your presentation that, that we're familiar with is the concept of the RH of typical cannabis produced in, in Canada. And we see it and you're talking 40, 45, 50 on a steady basis. And what we're learning through you guys is 55 is as low as you want to go and you want to be ultimately 58 to 62. So when the cannabis that we see from our customers is typically 40 to 50, just as a general, um, there's some work to do and some more education to get out there in front of these guys, which, which you know, is what we get up and do every day. So, John, you're making an important distinction. There's not a lot of selling to do in this process. We're really in the education business because exactly. the selling happens by itself. Um, everything we're talking about is measurable. There's no convincing that needs to be done except for overcoming whatever your own personal bias is. We tell people, don't take our word for it, try it for yourself. We sent out a Boveda challenge. It was a fairly uh, extensive, thousands of Boveda challenge kits went out through social media to a variety of people from home growers all the way up to commercial enterprises in the cannabis industry. And we said, don't take our word for it, test it for yourself. Do the pack or the stored with Boveda versus not stored with Boveda or stored with Boveda versus stored with anything else. And at the end of a period of time, uh, grind it, smell it, smoke it, and tell us what you think. And we had, I mean, this type of a, it sounds almost un, unreal when you hear what the results were, but it was a 94 to 96% positive response rate. People saying they preferred cannabis stored with Boveda. That's ridiculously high. And... Um, has been really effective for us to say, you know, we don't have to convince you of anything. We don't have to convince you of, you know, we've got some facts to share with you about the food safe nature of our ingredients, uh, the safety of our product, the effectiveness, the endurance of our product, the um, ability of our product to even bring back to at least a smokable level cannabis that's been over dried. There's a lot of people, especially in Canada, that have had uh, the unfortunate experience of of ordering some really great bud that was great bud when it was at the source, and then they get it at their home, mm -hmm. and they discover that it's bone dry. And uh, a lot of smoke shops in Canada carry our product now, and they've they've uh, people have been buying them through Amazon, another way that people can get our product, and they end up uh, rehydrating their cannabis to a point where it has the tactile experience of a smooth smoke and a, and a friendly smoke on your throat. Um, those types of things are all measurable. You know, we don't, we don't really have to do a lot of selling, but to John's point, we really have a job ahead of us in terms of really educating people on what's actually happening to what's in the cannabis flower from the time it leaves the LP or the producer's location till the time the consumer gets to enjoy it. There is a crisis of evaporation evaporation of weight which is money and then the evaporation of terpenes which is the quality aspect of the cannabis and john i love that you guys are that you got a water activity machine i think that's why we were so drawn to you and george from the start was your desire to to learn and educate people and really be that full service i mean that's what and it's sad that a lot of these you know canadian lps really don't know what they're doing and so we experience that in a lot of our conversations that they're looking to us to be the expert and you've made yourself the expert and that's great that you can go into an LP's operation, test their water activity and give them real life data of, you know, maybe where they're missing the bark or where they need to make some improvement. So, and, and, and Scott, I, do, I want to tack on and thanks for that, but I want to tack on one more thing uh, to Drew's comment, uh, evaporation of brand. Uh, is another byproduct, right? So, you know, straight straight dollars on yield, straight straight uh, evaporation of literally uh, moisture, but evaporation of your brand, you don't get that back. There's no t there's no humidity control for your brand. 
Right. Exactly. That's <clears throat> what, I mean, we stress that a lot to the LPs that, that are creating a brand or have a brand. You know, just the lifetime value of a single consumer is pretty, you know, on the cannabis side, is pretty astronomical, in, in my opinion. And the fact that, you know, you get one shot. If a guy walks into, you know, Nova Cannabis in, in Ontario and buys some product from an LP and it's bone dry, well, there's 30 other brands out there that that guy can go and try and experience. And he's never going to go back to whatever that LP is. You got one shot at these at these consumers. If, if, if I could take an opportunity for a segue, because this might be a great point for it. Uh, Drew started going down there. Uh, maybe I can just share a personal story from our site about really how this cannabis came to be scheduled for today and, and going through getting into the next topic here. So, you know, it, must, it was a two or three week period, maybe a, a four week period where I was engaged with three large LPs uh, in Canada, having the same conversation with all three of them, pretty much one after another. And I had, I had our guys come into us talking about them hearing or reading online or wherever the source came from that cannabis stored with Boveda, uh, Boveda uh, was sucking the terpenes out of the cannabis. Now, working close with you guys, knowing the answer, I reverted back to Scott. Uh, we we kind of talked and uh, put some materials together as a presentation with an explanation that we can talk about further here. Um, nothing could be further from the truth. So based on what we've learned to date so far, but also based on the next part of this conversation where I'm going here in terms of some of the other studies and research you guys have done around, is that true? Why, why were these guys coming to me asking me these questions? And, and we could talk about the explanation that was provided uh, as a topic as well. But there seems to be there seemed to be something out there where people were asking us questions about stuff that just straight up wasn't true based on facts, science, evidence, everything Drew mentioned. And that got Scott and I talking and that actually ended up us booking today to, to, to get together and talk about this. So let's play it out because I instead of just uh, uh, defending the point, which uh, you've proven to yourself, but uh, our listeners probably haven't had the opportunity. Let's just play it out from the perspective of why would somebody even entertain the idea that we're possibly s stealing terpenes. Um, part of it is traditionally people would open a bag of cannabis and they'd take a nose hit off the bag and they get a big bouquet off the bag and they go, hey, that's some pretty dank bud and this is pretty good news and that's awesome. Well, when you properly humidify with Boveda in that bag, what happens is, to Brian's point about the monolayer, instead of those terpenes coming out into the headspace, those terpenes are sequestered in the bud. Uh, and what happens is when you take a nose hit off that bag, you don't get as high of a, of a uh, bouquet as you would have if that had all been just unprotected. And so one point that I would make is when you smell a bag or a jar of cannabis and it's super fragrant, that's really good news to a degree because that's indicative of what was in that flower because you're smelling history. Mm. The, the important part is how many of those terpenes and cannabinoids are still in the flower and what was the opportunity taken to, to secure those, those terpenes and those cannabinoids in the flower in the first place. So it's understandable that people would go, hey, this is weird. I don't, I don't get quite the bouquet that I get off the bag that I used to without using anything. And to, to take it another step further, there's a lot of people that have taken shots at getting into this humidity control industry. And they've got some talented people that are that ha are very compelling personalities, and they talk a good game, and they say things that aren't necessarily grounded in fact, and they present things about either, you know, how many times have we heard, well, salt is bad. So they, they had this meme where they were talking about salt is bad, salt is corrosive. And objectively, you know, I suppose if we were dealing with salt on the hood of my automobile, uh, yeah, salt could be corrosive. But the salt in Bovida's product doesn't come out of the pack. Uh, the only thing that comes out of the pack is natural water vapor and purified water vapor and it's um it's one of those arguments that you know clever salespeople make up in order to get a foot in the door and to get a foothold in the marketplace and we always try to take the high road because we owe a great debt of gratitude to anybody that's tried to get into the marketplace because they have amplified the education about the need for precise reliable two-way humidity control in the cannabis industry so 
when I see these competitors out in the marketplace, even though their product doesn't perform anything like our product, I actually have a bit of gratitude for them because they have helped us uh, develop a marketplace uh, that we probably couldn't have done on our own as effectively as we've been able to do even with some of the disinformation that's out in the marketplace. But um, we're wide open for all those questions, whether it's about what the Boveda pack gives off, what it takes in, what the, you know, any questions about safety. These are things we take very serious, seriously and we'll, we'll do a great job if you give us a chance of showing you specifically what the studies say about what our product does and doesn't do. And uh, we're confident that you're going to be happy uh, using the only product in the marketplace that actually performs the way ours does. And I love your way you described uh, about the smell and the odor and the bouquet because one of my favorite lines kind of after I've helped explain about uh, the process, what Bovida does, why it's beneficial, all the things we've, we've started to cover here, you know, the, the closing line is essentially if you can smell your cannabis, it's degrading. Uh, and that's not good. So you have to almost, it's a complete paradigm shift in people's minds yeah. to associate odor or lack of odor with quality of cannabis. Just, it's just mm -hmm. science proves it. And it's just the paradigm shift in someone's mind. And that's, that's, that's the industry we're in and the, why we get up every morning and, uh, and talk really highly about what you guys do. So that's exactly it. We're, you know, <clears throat> we're changing the mindset of, uh, an industry, you know, that's, that's traditionally for the last 40, however many years, judge the quality of cannabis based off of smell in the bag. And, and, you know, in reality, and, and I didn't even like, you know, this is all new for me. We're learning this as we go on our own. Like that's the part of what, what I love about Bovida is, you know, we're so interested in, in learning more and educating ourselves and, and researching. And, and that's what we're finding. And, now uh, Drew and I on the sales side have the job of you know telling that story and and trying to change an industry in a in a safer, higher quality way of of really judging the quality of cannabis. Yeah, I, I sure, gotta sure. add on to that. I I remember when that first came in, um, and you know, Bovida stoles are steel and turbines. Um, and as a scientist, you're saying, well, how does water vapor do that? And you know, obviously, if you've got some really sticky, high terpene profile buds in any container, your container is going to smell like weed yeah. many, many months afterwards after it's gone. Um, so we went through the whole gambit of, you know what, I'm going to take our packs, I'm going to test the paper, nothing's in the paper, I'm going to test the inside of the formula, nothing was inside the formula. And as we started to dig down and it was zero, zero terps here, zero terps within the formula, okay, what? what really is happening and then it pushed us into those studies to to really understand that that range and that model layer. so i'm actually happy you know yeah. i love talking to consumers and scientists you know you have a direct relationship to them and um start to understand and solve problems and uh it's great uh, it was it was really interesting and and just that range alone helps so yeah one of the one of the uh comments that we make that resonates really well is further to drew's uh uh, explanation about try it out uh try storing uh your product with can uh, with bovida and without or with uh no humidity controls or alternative humidity controls uh 30 days 60 days whatever you want take it out give it a whiff uh take the product stored with with bovida and grind it up in your hand or put in a grinder and it's going to blow your face off in terms of that bouquet right so you, you got to change how they're going to get their receptors to appreciate the quality uh at the appropriate time not the fact when you open the bag it smells good so it's really really uh really good examples of helping to explain to people what what's happening here and all the benefits i was just on a call this morning with an lp and there was an ex executive from the lp and then um i don't recall if it was a head grower but one of uh the members of their grow team that was very uh informed on cannabis and this was brought up by the executive and i didn't even have to say anything I don't know if this guy took the challenge because I need to follow up with him or, or what, but he said, no, you don't understand. If you're smelling a lot of terpenes when you open one of our containers, that means that it's not been stored properly and those are in the headspace. He said, if you use Bovida, you're not going to smell the most, like it's not going to be an intense nose hit when you open that bag, but as soon as you break that up and grind it up, it's there and it's been protected in the cannabis and now you can actually consume it and enjoy it versus just smelling it 
in the air. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of. I give people the uh, analogy of you know you buy an orange, or if you have an orange, it may smell very. Uh, it'll smell like an orange, just a hint of it. But as soon as you peel that open, those terpenes and those oils get released, and then it's like whoa! Your hands will smell like an orange, your mouth, mm-hmm. your face, whatever you touch afterwards will smell like an orange. That's a great example. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to touch on, and and, and around this testing, and we talk about the amount of terpenes that we can we can save is uh, we started to understand um, there's a, another facet to this, and it was um, you know what happens to cannabis over time uh, when it's stored with bovida and without bovida. Um, so more of a stability test. And what was really interesting, we started to look at what would happen in seven days, what would happen in 30 days, 60, and 90. Uh, and this, these are long-term tests that, um, you know, we're using outside labs and no one else in the industry is doing these tests. And we've, we've been finding that in, in almost um, – in the seven days without humidity control, almost forty percent of the terpenes are lost uh, wow. within your cannabis, wow. uh, which is what was astounding to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the four month mark, you lose almost up to sixty percent. So, um, and with bovida, it's just the opposite. Uh, we're maintaining it and, and controlling it all the way through. So, uh, there's just more and more studies that we're doing. They're just finding out and just unique plant and, and terpenes and what happens and how they're actually changing. We see terpenes changing over time uh, and starting to co-mingle and create uh, their different flavors. So uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and you know what? To The seven days blew my mind too. It's almost like unreal how how much are lost at, at seven days. And, and I think, you know, I've heard a lot that people say, oh, I sell my cannabis too fast to need Bovida. Well, Seven days is a pretty short window, and you're losing forty percent of those terpenes. I mean, that's all the more reason to to make sure that your cannabis is properly. What, what does it look like after 180 days, right? If you don't have anything in there, because it's you know the the life the life cycle of cannabis uh, is well beyond seven thirty days. You know, you're talking 120, 180 days, right? Yeah, especially up here in Ontario. John, you, you brought up this question at a time, and I wanted to go back to it because I think this is a, it, it's an easy thing to lose in the, in the conversation, the time to market. What's a short window of time to market in Canada versus what one of the longer time to markets is? I know if I go into a, a, a dispensary or if I order through a, a, a service, yes, yes. Uh, or it, there's, a, there's, a, like, there's a born-on date on the package. There's a, there's yeah. a package yeah. date, harvested date, all those details. These are all published. It's all part of the process. This is all measurable. What's, what's the average? What's a short frame I, and a long frame? I, I got to say that, you know, uh, the state of the industry, inventory, brands that are out there, producers that are making different products, it's not inconceivable that uh, a product that, might have finished off perfectly fine from the growers and the LPs perspective as it got put into a plastic non-airtight tote with no bovida or no humidity control process in there. By the time that product ends up in a customer patient shelf, it could be 180 days. Um, so that's why I said in seven days that happens, in 30 days that happens. Well, what happens in 180 days, 120 days? You know, so call it call it months, not weeks, right. for sure, for sure. Yeah. For sure. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And let me ask you guys a question. So after seven days, X amount of terpenes get lost without any humidity control. With Bovida, what percent of terpenes get retained under these studies? Have you guys got into that stuff or those some of the results that come out, not to be uh, scientific and nail you down on it, but there must be a, uh, a number of what you guys are retaining that you can demonstrate through some results that Bovida retains uh yeah yeah Yeah, absolutely um what's what first off i just wanted to make sure that you guys understand that terpenes i mean cannabis is an an organic plant right it it wants to as soon as it's chopped dried cured it's going to start decomposing it wants to get back to mother earth right so um so what we're what bovida is effective at doing is um trying to slow down that degradation slowing down as much as you possibly can and in, at that seven-day mark, um, you know, if 40%, because of 40% is lost, um, there, we're showing less than 10% is lost. And not only that, um, 
and when you look at the the overall duration, um, we're looking at almost eight and a half times more um, longer. I should say we can preserve eight and a half times longer terpenes uh, throughout uh, the our stability test right now. So uh, it's there's always they're always going to degrade. So you're never always going to be at a hundred percent from day one uh, to the time a consumer gets it. Uh, but you're going to retain a lot more uh, versus without humidity control, for sure. And there's some other factors that come in. We all get all sciencey about it. It really depends on you know volumes stored and type of container and mm-hmm. type Dishes. of packaging and all those things. But the point is, there's a window of enjoyment for cannabis flower, and the window of enjoyment without any protection is probably anywhere from two to four weeks. And then it's dramatically different flower. It just is, especially if you're in a dry climate. Uh, Canada is blessed with some incredibly dry circumstances. It's very similar to Minnesota in the winter. Um, there's just a lack of humidity. And um, it's like the market in Colorado. There's just certain p- places that have such dry climates that it's, it's brutal to try to maintain any t- type of consistent quality over time. But if you can take the window of enjoyment from a four-week window and you can extend that into a four-month, six-month, eight-month window, that's a dramatic shift in what the consumer gets to enjoy. 